The last thing I really want to talk about today, because we've been, <laughs> I know we've been going for a while. You've been generous with your time. When you, when you get into the omics, when you start to biopsy the muscles, when you start to look at the mitochondria in a way that we can't do it, you know, uh, in a regular clinical setting, what else are you seeing that's, that's differentiating the healthy from the unhealthy mitochondria or the, the high functioning from the low functioning mitochondria? Yeah. So there, there's this, again, I keep talking about papers that would have published, but we've been working for three years quite hard. And now we, we cannot continue doing this. We need to start writing the papers, right? And all you need, that is you need more postdocs. You, you yeah. need more, <laughs> need more, more graduate oh, yeah. students and postdocs to help with the writing. Yeah. But we have completed a pretty cool study, uh, and they're writing the manuscript now, um, uh, looking between sedentary and active. We know already about, there are a bunch of research showing uh, at the cellular level the difference between people with type 2 diabetes or mitochondrial, uh, I mean, uh, metabolic syndrome and uh, active individuals or, or even sedentary. We want to see also, or, or we want to show that people who are sedentary, they already have problems. And uh, we wanted to compare them with moderately active people who is, should be kind of how we should be as humans, right? So we, we, we looked into the mitochondria, into mitochondria. So we looked at their significant dysregulation at the mitochondrial level, everywhere you look in the mitochondria, in sedentary individuals. Uh, you see a decreased uh, capacity to oxidize, to burn uh, glucose uh, in terms of pyruvate, fatty acids, amino acids. You see a significantly decrease in uh, electron transport chain as well, all the complexes. Uh, and you see also a significantly decreased capacity in the transporters of different substrates. So uh, um, uh, one thing that it really caught our attention, and we think that uh, this is something that we really want to emphasize, and hopefully others in the future, is that we have identified that there is the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier, which is, as I discussed earlier, that's the transporter of, my, of pyruvate into the mitochondria, uh, which is um, dysregulated already, uh, down significantly downregulated in, P in sedentary individuals compared to uh, um, active individuals. Uh, then we are matching it with the pyruvate flux, the oxidation itself. So both the transporter and the flux are significantly dysregulated. What that, does this mean uh, potentially? So that's shuttling all. That's going to shuttle pyruvate to the other way it's going to get in the cell, which is through lactate. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, and, and also, what, what, what are the implications of this? So, we, again, these people are, they don't have diabetes or prediabetes, right? They're, 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 they're this could be a healthy person who's not active. Exactly. And this is what, unfortunately, this being the model in, in most research uh, papers out there, comparing the unhealthy with a sedentary health individual. Right? I've been pushing for, for, for years that the model should not be the, the healthy sedentary individual uh, because that, that is uh, the intervention. You know, uh, as humans, we're meant to walk or to exercise. So we need to look at perfection to understand imperfection. The, the intervention of, 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 of human evolution has been becoming sedentary, you know? And in fact, I had, you know, a hard time to, to, to to get an IRB, you know, to, 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 to start this study, I have a hard time with the committee to convince them that using active people as the gold standard to understand imperfection, that's the way to go. But anyways, what we see is that these people already, they don't have clinic, uh, but yeah, they have a significant- They don't have, they don't have clinical signs. Clinical you symptoms, mean? sorry. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not clinical symptoms. They're the healthy sedentary individuals, but, um, um, so they're, they, don't, they don't have insulin resistance and they don't have done regulation of GLUT4 transporters. Even hyperinsulinemia, do they have even, are they Nothing. hyperinsulinemic when challenged with the glucose tolerance test? These people, they have no symptoms. They haven't reported any uh, glucose tolerance test that is uh, abnormal, uh, normal people. Um, and then uh, they have a significant disruption in, in this mitochondrial pyruvate carrier. So, which might mean that the, 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 the first door that might be jammed uh, is, is that entrance of pyruvate inside mitochondria. Most of the research in diabetes has done more at the peripheral level, if you will, 
glucose levels, more at the surface levels of the cell, the GLUT4, the insulin resistance, the pancreas release of insulin, yes. the uh, beta cells, etc. But what's the fate of glucose once it enters the cell, right? Um, and this is what we're looking into this. So, and the fate is pyruvate, but what's the fate of pyruvate? As you said very well, does it enter the mitochondria or is shuttled to or uh, uh, reduced to lactate? So I, I, I think that this is important to see because uh, it could be a marker down the road uh, because again, these people don't have clinical symptoms yet they have a significant dysregulation in their glucose metabolism. So could th this be 10, 15 years ahead of clinical symptoms and insulin resistance? So this is more reason also to consider sedentary individuals to see, hey, they have a metabolic dysregulation already. Same thing we're doing at the uh, fat oxidation level. The CPT1 and CPT2, the transporters of fat, uh, they're significantly downregulated as well. So that means they're not going to be able to transport fat very well, which also matches to the fat oxidation itself, where we inject uh, fatty acids into the mitochondria that are not oxidated well. So they all match as well. So they have a, a dysregulation already that is significant compared to moderate individuals at the glucose metabolism and fat metabolism. Thank you.